people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. Welcome to the motherfucking relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. The latest as it pertains to the upcoming David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre pay-per-view set to land on November 5th in San Antonio, Texas. The Benavidez family will get to spend the Thanksgiving holiday together. However, it won't be at the dinner table, but in the ring, as David and Jose Jr. will land on the same show. BoxingScene.com has confirmed that plans are in place for the Benavidez brothers to appear in separate bouts as part of a November 25th Showtime pay-per-view rumored to take place in San Antonio, Texas. The two leading venues to land the event are the Frost Bank Center, formerly AT&T Center, home to the NBA's San Antonio Spurs, and the often used Alamo Dome. You may have heard me say that David Benavidez certainly has the right base style for the job, but there is a question as to what level he competes with that style. Is he an A-level pressure guy, B-level, C-level, D-level? I mean, his quality of competition really isn't the best. The very best name on his resume, the name of former IBF champion Caleb Plant, he fought that guy to a decision. He didn't stop him the way Canelo did. A year prior to David's fight with him. And all people can tell you is that, well, Caleb plant he kept holding he kept tying david benavidez up but david benavidez is six foot two six foot three he's big very big as far as super middleweights go they've dubbed him the mexican monster so you tell me what kind of monster can't break the clinch create some space and put some punches in there to shake off caleb plant what terence crawford did whenever errol tried to tie him up he shook him off pushed him off, created some space, and put some punches in there. For a guy who's as big and as young as David Benavidez, dubbed the Mexican monster, surely the expectation is that he should be able to overpower a so obviously exhausted Caleb Plant. He burned out. Well, Caleb Plant was still fresh in the early goings of the match. He was so obviously out hustling David Benavidez, piling up the points and winning rounds. He was actually winning rounds. It wasn't until he burned out. That's when David really started landing punches after Caleb got tired. I think that David has the right base style for a herky-jerky pure boxer who's not big on power like Demetrius Andre. I do. I do think he has the right base style, though I'm not sure he has all the bells and whistles. What does that mean? You will recall that Tim Cheatham had Caleb Plant winning the first five rounds. He had Caleb Plant sweeping the first five. Dave Moretti and Steve Weisfeld, they had it a bit different. Steve had it wide in David Benavidez's favor. I don't agree with his card. Caleb Plant was able to win five rounds on at least one of the judges scorecards. Five, How many five, rounds five. do you think Demetrius Andre can win? Because I'm not sure that David Benavidez has much, if any, experience against southpaws. Could the angles bother him? The movement, the feints, the herky-jerkiness? Demetrius Andre has a penchant to come out guns blazing in the opening rounds of a match, oftentimes scoring at least one knockdown in doing so. Could that happen in the David Benavidez fight? And if it does, how will it affect David psychologically? He's supposed to be the Mexican monster. Demetrius ain't no power puncher. He ain't got the reputation for one. I'll tell you what I think. I'll tell you what I think. Why? I think that David Benavidez may have the right base style for the job, but because he doesn't have all the bells and whistles, because he's more of a C plus to a B minus pressure guy, right? Demetrius might be able to make him look human. Like Caleb did. I saw a recent video of David Benavidez who looks to be in preparation for the upcoming match with Demetrius, and he looked big, really big. I mean, I think this guy's walking around anywhere in between 185 to 200 pounds. 
fights, maybe a little more. He gets big in between fights, and he doesn't fight that often. That's important, because the more often you fight, the less of a trial it becomes to make the weight, to make 168 pounds, where he's been campaigning forever. People tend to forget that the first time he won the WBC title was way back there in 2017. That was six years ago. It was a long time ago. He's been campaigning at this weight for a long time, and how much longer does he mean to do it? A guy walking around this size, boiling all the way down to 168, it has, has consequences. Has, 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 do you remember Jared Hurd? Yeah. Huge guy for 154 pounds. God only knows how he was making the junior middleweight limit. Solid guy, durable guy, big guy. Unified champion, beat Eris Lara. And he was durable up until he stepped foot in the ring with Julian Williams, who's not known for being a particularly heavy-handed puncher. And it seemed like all of Jarrett Hurd's punch resistance was gone. Gone overnight. His durability. I had a theory that the reason Jarrett Hurd's durability was all but gone almost overnight is because he was boiling down to a weight that was unhealthy for him to make too long. And I think the same might apply to David Benavidez. Now, I'm not telling you... I can't tell you when. When exactly it's going to backfire. The consequence of staying at a weight too long is that one day you're going to go in there and your punch resistance is going to be sapped. You put your body through too much for too long. You're going to get hit. You're going to get hit hard. And you won't take the shot as well as you used to. Like what we saw with Jared Hurd. I feel like... Demetrius Andre isn't necessarily a power puncher, we know that, he's not a power guy, but he is a sharper puncher than most guys that David deals with, and he is a southpaw, David ain't boxed too many of those. If he has, it must have been years ago, because he hasn't boxed any southpaws in recent memory. The ingredients are there, I think, for Demetrius Andre to make David Benavidez look human, maybe, maybe even knock him down, but not to knock him out. Demetrius is good for a knockdown, but not a knockout, he's not a strong finisher. So I see a situation to where between Demetrius Andre's strong start and his propensity to fade down the stretch, David Benavidez's gas tank, which would allow him to take over. The logical choice is David on points. David on points because of Demetrius's poor engine, his age. He's in his mid-30s. And if nothing else, we know who the promotion is behind. We know who the PBC fighter, the PBC fighter here is. It's David. He's the one that they are invested in. That's saying that Demetrius Andre even if he did enough to win a points decision, I don't think the banner would let him. David Benavidez is the pick, though. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Demetrius make him look more human than he normally looks. Less like a monster and more like a very basic, basic fighter. Who's matched well. Nothing about David Benavidez's resume jumps out at you. There's nothing special about it. Nothing that tells me that he's a monster. Having the right base style, though still lacking all the bells and whistles, he might look human en route to a points decision. Men's light heavyweight news. Former WBC light heavyweight champion Oleksandr Vozdik says, I want B-ball, better be, I'm ready for them. These comments were ahead of this past weekend's fight, unbeknownst to most. Oleksandr Vozdik fought on that undercard. Racked up another victory, his third since gearing his comeback. The nail, as he's called, called it quits after getting stopped by Russian champion Artur Betterbeev in their IBF WBC title unification fight in October of 2019 at the Lycura Center in Philadelphia. Betterbeev, who lives and trains in Montreal, has since added the WBO trinket to his wares. Vozdik, whose career is currently guided by Eddie Reynoso, the trainer and manager of Canelo Alvarez, is hoping that he will be able to get into title contention after a win over Rodrigo which he got. Got it this past weekend. He stopped him. A rematch with Better Beef or a fight with Dimitri Bivol, the WBA light heavyweight champion, a top priorities for Vostik. But he's also open to fighting the winner of an intriguing non-title light heavyweight bout between Joshua Buatzi and Dan Aziz on October 21st at the O2 Arena in London. They're not going to fight him. Reports indicate that both Joshua Buatzi and Dan Aziz before their fights were made, they were offered a world title shot at Dimitri Bivol and both chose to fight each other. They both chose to stay domestic. They don't want to fight world class fighters. Now remember that these comments from Vozdik were made ahead of this past weekend's fight. He said, listen, for now, I'm focusing 100% on my fight with Isaac Rodriguez. But right after, because I believe I'm going to win this fight, I want to fight the best. 
I want to fight Bevo. I want to fight Better Beef. I'm ready for them. I'm ready for the biggest names. Buatzi, Aziz, Craig Richards, who else? I'm ready for them. Oleksandr Vozdek here and now is a high-risk, low-reward opponent to a lot of those aforementioned names. Really, all of them. Asked if he has any ambitions to move up to cruiserweight, Vozdek, 36, insisted he is comfortable at the weight he has been his entire career. Right now, I feel pretty comfortable at light heavyweight, Vozdek said. I wouldn't say I was underweight, but I definitely feel I can go down to 168. Now, I feel I'm comfortable at 175. My thoughts. Artur Betterbeef, upon his return, has a mandatory challenger to satisfy. Callum Smith. That's supposed to be going down early next year. If he takes care of business with Callum Smith, he still has no reason, no incentive to run it back with Oleksandr Vozdik. And the other guys that he mentioned, Dan Aziz, Joshua Buatzi, the both of those guys halt tail when offered a world title shot at Dmitry Bivol. So I don't think they're gonna roll the dice with a guy like Oleksandr Vozdik, a skilled operator and a former champion. You think about Craig Spider Richards. Maybe for the right price, he would do it. But what's the right price and how much should you have to spend to make a fight between those two? At what point does it become impractical? It seems that Oleksandr Vozdik is being managed by Eddie Reynoso, but as far as a promoter, he seems to be a promotional free agent. Craig, Craig is with Matchroom, but Oleksandr's not with anybody. Hard to imagine that fight happens. Now there is Dmitry Bivol, WBA light heavyweight champion, who's been stuck without a dance partner for most of this year. In theory, you could make a fight between them if Dimitri were willing to give Oleksandr Vozdik a shot. I don't know that he is. Why would he? Current political climate would make the fight between them somewhat taboo. A Ukrainian national versus a Russian national, given what's happening in that region of the world, it is sort of bad optics. I understand that they are both professionals and they probably don't have any rancor towards each other. I don't know though. You know what I think? What? I think that Oleksandr Vozdik should go after Germany's own Michael Eifert, the IBF's mandatory challenger. If he wants to be fast-tracked to a world title shot of any kind, I feel like that would be his best bet because Michael Eifert isn't with anyone, and I don't think you have to break the bank to get him in the ring. To my knowledge, he doesn't have a fight coming up, and he's a ways out from his title shot. Artur's got to take care of business with Callum Smith first. Upon his return early next year, two to three months from now, he's got to take care of that guy first, which puts Michael Eifert's title shot further out. He's not doing anything. I guess the biggest problem for Oleksandr is that he's not with anyone. He's not with a major promotional outfit. So who would make the offer to Michael Eifert to put his interim status on the line? I think that's the biggest obstacle. Where's the money going to come from? I don't doubt that Oleksandr Vozdik would be receptive to such a fight, but who is going to make it happen. There's no such thing as a free lunch. If he were to get Michael in the ring and beat him, that would make him Artur Betterbeef's IBF mandatory challenger. He says he wants a rematch with that guy. That's one way he can get it. That'll get him there. The light heavyweight division has really cooled off and it's in much need of a shot in the arm. Somebody to shake things up. Maybe that somebody could be Oleksandr Vozdik, but he is 36. He ain't got the luxury of time. We'll see what happens. Just in keeping with the theme of all things light heavyweight, Artur Better Beef's trainer provides positive update on recovery ahead of scheduled Callum Smith fight. Who would have thought that one of the most dangerous fighters and the strongest finishers in the sport is also one of the most injured, the often injured Artur Better Beef, who will be back in full training mode by the end of October, according to his trainer. The unified WBC, WBO, IBF light heavyweight champion from Russia had to drop out of a schedule scheduled mandated title defense in August against England's Callum Smith after dental surgery led to a bone infection in his jaw. The fight has been rescheduled to January 13th at the Videotron Center in Quebec City on a top rank and Eye of the Tiger promoted card. Eye of the Tiger Management, a Canada-based promotional outfit, they're the ones who promote Richard Mabilly. And Mary Spencer, who's going to be in action very soon opposite the ring, Femke Hermans, for the second time. They're a very 
well-to-do promotional outfit based out of Canada. Much like Yvonne Michel. Group Yvonne Michel, who up until recently, Top Rank was doing a lot of business with, but I guess that relationship has ended momentarily, and they're currently in bed with Eye of the Tiger management. Mark Ramsey, the head trainer of Better Beef, said in a recent interview that Better Beef would be back to full contact training by the end of October. Our tour is doing very well. He has resumed training and should be okay to start full contact by the end of October, Ramsey told BoxingScene.com. No frustration, this is just part of our work. Now we are looking forward, he added. Better Beef is coming on off an eighth round stoppage over England's Anthony Yard back in January at Ovo Arena in Wembley, London. And that's saying that when he sets foot in the ring with Callum, it will have been a year's time since he last saw action, and this guy is not getting any younger. In truth, both guys could stand to be more active. It's not just Art Tour. Callum Smith always seems to be on the sidelines for some reason. He's younger than Artur, but he could stand to be a bit busier as well. I suppose he didn't want to take a fight in between. Anything that might jeopardize this fight with Artur Better Beef? I'll tell you the truth. I don't have a rooting interest in either fighter, in either Artur or Callum. But if by some chance Callum could pull off this miracle in Quebec early next year, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. If the world titles were to change hands and Callum Smith were to become this division's unified ring magazine champion, that could breathe new life into this division. We could get undisputed. He could take those titles back to Matchroom, at which point he could then unify them with Dimitri Bivol. And all they'd have to do is get the WBC to sanction it. That's another matter. That's if he wins. If he loses, our best bet to see an undisputed champion crowned at light heavyweight would have have to be top ranks recent partnership with Turkey Alashik over there in the Middle East. Well, that's Saudi money. Perhaps they could pay for the fight. Let's be honest. As much as hardcores like me and you would like to see Artur and Dimitri swap punches, here in America, that's not a hot ticket. And for what the fighters are going to want for the fight, the champions... You have to be able to make the numbers work. Maybe those numbers won't work in America, but in Saudi. I don't think Eddie Hearn would hesitate to send Dimitri over because he knows he can't make that fight himself. And he doesn't have Dimitri doing very much. He hasn't done very much this entire calendar year. He cannot afford for next year to go anything like this one did. My only question is, how interested is Bob in making that fight? I haven't heard him say much about it the last couple of weeks, the last couple of months. Perhaps we'll get an answer if Artur Better Beef takes care of business with Callum. That's not till January. It's a guesstimation that the Saudis could afford to bankroll that fight. Preliminary reports indicated that they tried to do it, but they couldn't make the numbers work. It was months ago. This is the only sensible fight left to make at light heavyweight, which has severely cooled off this calendar year. Top rank is still in the odd to a better beef business. Well, this is one of the biggest fights you could put him in. I just wonder if there's gonna be a conscious effort to do this fight if Artur beats Callum. Let's hope so.